Hello everyone, welcome back to CR Investor's ongoing technical analysis tutorial series. Uh, today's tutorial is specifically on on balance volume and using the OBV indicator to help you understand which way money is flowing. Uh, as you can see by the intro slide here, understanding and using the OBV indicator. Uh, I'd encourage everyone who is watching this tutorial to uh, pop on over and grab the Google Docs slideshow presentation and that way you have the material in front of you uh, and you can uh, leaf through the pages and zoom in on them as I'm sort of talking away here. Uh, you can find the link, uh, it should be on the YouTube page here in the introduction uh, to this uh, tutorial, uh, so uh, you should be able to find the link on the YouTube page, or by all means, if you'd like, you can go to my website, therationalinvestor.ca, and uh, head over to the seminars uh, section of the, uh, the web page and follow the links there for uh, finding uh, this material. So, uh, you know, these tutorials seem to be running about 10 to 20 minutes long, so uh, they're chocked full of lots of information. I have to move fairly quickly uh, to make sure that we cover it. Uh, this tutorial itself is a little bit shorter than the others, but uh, let's get to it and uh, get you learning. So, uh, specifically the OBV tutorial, what are the topics that we're going to cover? Uh, first, we're going to define what OBV is, and basically, uh, you know, unfortunately in the stock market we use a lot of these acronyms, so uh, you might get overwhelmed by, uh, you know, hearing these letters like MACD and OBV and W percentage R and stuff like that, so uh, we'll help you understand what OBV stands for and put it into your vocabulary. Uh, we're going to take a look at the four key components of the OBV, specifically uh, the reading itself. Uh, I'm a big fan uh, of the 13 period exponential moving average or EMA, so on all my OBV studies I usually have that moving average on the study. Uh, we're going to look at how the volume bars themselves confirm uh, what we're seeing on OBV and you'll notice on all my charts that I overlay the OBV study over top of the, the volume bars because the bars themselves are, are uh, quite significant. And then we're going to look at market structure. Of course, uh, you know, if you've watched my videos then you'll understand that uh, I'm a big fan of M's and W's and uh, we'll see how that relates to uh, volume and money flow. Um, we're going to move on then uh, and examine the concept of divergence and in essence uh, these are our really powerful tools that uh, we technicians can take from our charts is that quite often either volume or momentum uh, will actually hint at, uh, at either internal strength or internal weakness within an issue uh, that price may not reveal itself. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to look at how I, CR Investor, Brian Beamish, uh, uses the OBV on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's get moving. All right, so simple definitions. Um, what does OBV stand for? Uh, it stands specifically for on balance volume. Um, and if you think about it, you know, the words themselves basically describe exactly what this indicator is. is we're just going to look at the volume and we're going to ask on balance, is it rising? Is it falling? Is the trend rising? Is money flowing in or is it falling? Is it flowing out? Very simple. Um, specific definition, it's a method used in technical analysis, excuse me, technical analysis uh, to detect momentum. Um, the calculation of which relates volume to price change. OBV provides a running total of volume and shows whether the volume is flowing in or out of a given security. This indicator was developed by Joe Granville. Uh, OBV attempts to detect when a financial instrument is being accumulated by a large number of buyers or sold by many of sellers. Traders will use an upward sloping OBV to confirm an uptrend, while a downward sloping OB OBV is used to confirm a downtrend. And hopefully this stuff seems, uh, it should be fairly intuitive. The long and short of it here is if money is flowing into an issue, then it's bullish. If money is flowing out of an issue, then it's bearish. 
Finding a downward sloping OBV while the price of an asset is trending upward can be used to suggest that the smart traders are starting to exit their positions and that a shift in the trend may be coming. And you'll recall from previous tutorials, that's what we call divergence. And we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, as always, um, I always like to make reference to my sort of textbook definitions. So you'll see that I have a nice little link here to Investo uh, Investopedia. And uh, if you'd like to learn uh, more about OBV and, and this uh, particular study or other volume studies, I highly recommend that you uh, go into the site and uh, do some digging on your own uh, and lots and lots of information to learn. All right, moving right along. All right, so um, we're just going to take a look at a very simple uh, overview of on-balance volume. And uh, as you can see on this chart, uh, I've just happened to pull up one stock that's pretty popular um, in the public eye th these days, and that's Facebook. Um, and you can see that uh, the price chart, I like to use uh, tradingview.com. These are excellent charts. And as you can see, uh, I've just uh, loaded the Facebook chart, uh, price chart, and I just went up into the indicators and I just selected uh, on balance volume and I just added it to the chart. And as you can see, it's a nice simple graphical illustration of, of uh, the way money has been flowing into and out of the issue. So, uh, you know, we have basically four key components that we talked about uh, at the beginning of the tutorial, so let's go through them. Number one uh, is the OBV line, and that's this blue line, right? And you can see that it moves up and down as uh, the issue goes through its uh, sort of daily gyrations. Um, Second, we have the 13 period exponential moving average of the OBV line and that's the red line on this chart. And you can see that basically as uh, OBV is trending higher, the blue line or a raw reading should be higher than the moving average. And conversely, when the market's trending lower, um, the blue line, that's our OBV, is below the red line or the moving average. So nice, simple, simple graphical illustration of, of OBV. Um, the third thing that uh, should be uh, mentioned here is key component is uh, volume confirmation. Um, you'll see that uh, quite often uh, trend reversals will come on big chunky volume bars. If we get a situation where a uh, trend starts to reverse and it's on very light volume, then we may not have the OBV actually break down and that might in itself represent a bit of a trap. So as you can see, uh, you know, on most of these turns here, uh, you know, on this first breakdown, we see big, big selling chunky bars, so that confirms a breakdown. Uh, on this bottom, you can see just green bar after green bar after green bar, just nice and chunky buy volume, and in, indeed it actually hit an apex uh, several bars later. Uh, then on this breakdown, you can see that as the market's breaking down, lots of red bars, and then the red bars are actually accelerating. So good idea when you're looking at an OBV indicator like this, uh, or a lot of the money flow indicators for that matter, that you want to see that the actual bars are confirming what you're seeing in the indicator itself. So uh, good to uh, always make sure that volume is confirming. Big chunky bars, just think of that. Uh, and then the last key takeaway or key component here is market structure. And uh, that's sort of this little graphical uh, illustration right in the middle of the chart where we say we're always hunting for structure. Where M's, if you see M's in action, that usually is a bearish sign. And conversely, double, in, excuse me, W's are often bullish. So, you know, as we can see, we had a nice M here on the breakdown. And sure enough, that confirmed. We have a little bit of a W here, you know, higher lows and higher highs. Uh, big M up here, nice clean M. Uh, breakdown so you know sometimes they can spit out little false signals you know and so I might argue that uh, you know nothing in the market is guaranteed um, but we can on generally speaking uh, get a pretty good idea of the trend in volume based on uh, market structure all right moving right along uh, we're now going to take a look at this concept of divergence a little bit closer 
And uh, you know what we have here on this slide, basically two charts. Uh, one is a representation of a bullish uh, divergence, and one is representative of a bearish divergence. Um, and so basically what we say here is the market is said to be in a divergence when an underlying asset price is moving in one direction, but the indicator is moving in another. This condition can often lead to dramatic moves by price to basically get back into sync with its internals. So if we look at the example on the left, we see that price was making lower highs and lower lows, and yet at the same time, the on-balance volume was not. And you see, uh, as price was working its way lower, we had very, very quiet action in here. Volume really, really tapered off. You'll notice, too, market structure. We had a nice little W come in here. Um, even though price itself was moving down, at this point, the OBV was actually suggesting that money was flowing into this issue, not out. And so uh, not a big surprise. We see a massive rally coming out of that event. Um, you know, I have learned from personal experience that um, uh, OBV divergences um, are very, very significant events. Um, on the flip side, we have the bearish scenario here um, on the chart on the right, and we see that um, you know we had a nice big powerful rally. Um, on balance, volume was moving higher. Basically, money was flowing in. Then we had a break, and the break actually uh, was much more significant volume-wise than price-wise. Uh, price actually did rebound, and it came up and made new highs, but the OBV, or the actual buying itself, did not. You'll notice, too, that uh, we again talking about market structure. We had a very well-defined little M top here that broke through the moving average. So on top of the fact that market structure here was weak, we had basically a bearish divergence where the momentum, or excuse me, the volume indicator itself was making lower highs and lower lows, but price itself was moving and making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, again, you know, with this statement, uh, usually within these conditions, price itself has to sort of play catch up. Um, as it sort of catches up to the internals of the market, and you can see price came down here quite dramatically. So, you know, big takeaway from this indicator, just like the MACD indicator and quite a few other indicators that I use, divergence is the real key here. So if we can hunt for these divergences, um, the odds of our trade success go way up. All right, so uh, you know, probably uh, where I guess we're getting close to the end of this uh, tutorial, and at this point, what I just like to do is, uh, you know, just a graphical demonstration of how I use the OBV in conjunction with all my other indicators uh, to confirm the trade setup. So, you know, what we say on this slide: while volume can be a powerful driver, a rational investment idea should encompass elements from three unrelated studies. Uh, you know, I make a, the argument time and time again that, uh, you know, you may have, uh, let's say, a relative strength index, a stochastic, and a Williams percentage R all give you signals, and I would argue that all of those are just nothing more than a proxy for momentum. Um, what I really like to do as a technician is I like to encompass signals from various different camps. So I like to look at price action, I like to look at the volume, and I like to look at momentum. If we happen to get signals in all three of these schools of thought, then it becomes very, very powerful. So simply put here, I've said if one adds a momentum study, in this case I use two indicators together from my, my momentum analysis, and you're more than welcome to take a look at those tutorials on the, Mac, on the modified MACD histogram and on the modified uh, Williams percentage R uh, indicator that I use. Um, and then I look for trade setups based on price. Um, so if we get volume signal, momentum signal, price signal, one can argue that we have a rational trade idea. Uh, I'd also point out too, and you know, you've heard me say it before, um, if you got rid of all of these indicator tools and you just looked at price itself, um, this opportunity would have never revealed itself. I mean, those uh, that just use go off price action alone, if an issue is making a lower high and lower low, then you would actually be bearish and you would have missed this uh, entire rally here. 
All right, so when used in conjunction with momentum and price studies, OBV can be a powerful volume analysis trading tool. And you know, you probably heard me say it a few times through just this tutorial, really try and layer your indicators from different schools of thought to basically confirm the trade idea. And as you can see here, we had the basically the volume divergence and we had the breakout. We also had a nice momentum divergence. We had Willie basically in our stupid condition, um, very oversold. Uh, and then, of course, we had a nice price breakout here. Put it all together, and uh, and we have a pretty good trade idea. And sure enough, boom, up goes price. All right, so that basically brings us to the end of this uh, OBV tutorial. It's a bit shorter than the others, but uh, in essence, I think we've covered uh, the concept fairly well. Um, this has basically been understanding and using the OBV indicator and looking at volume for confirmation. As I've said before, you're more than welcome to uh, pull down this Google document slideshow presentation and use it at your leisure for reference. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't copy it or you know reuse it uh, without a acknowledgement. Uh, you are at always uh, more than welcome to come over to the website and uh, dig through the uh, uh, seminars and tutorial section there to learn more about how I use these indicators and to look at all the various blog uh, posts that I make and trading idea setups uh, that show uh, you know these indicators in action. Uh, as well, uh, I would encourage you to, uh, if you are a Twitterer, I don't know that that's a word or not, but anyway, um, you can follow me on uh, on Twitter at CR Investor, and that way you can uh, get all of my updates as they happen. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, it's been very uh, educational, I think, for everyone uh, to uh, pay attention to how volume acts and incorporate a volume uh, indicator into your analysis and uh, I wish you all the best of luck in your trading and have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks a lot everybody and all the best.